and welcome to this weekend's video and thanks for coming along and, and tuning in. So last week we talked about the white fryers factory and somebody actually pointed out I made an error in the video so I just wanted to clear that up right away, get that sorted now. I talked about white fryers factory on an international level being on a par with Galley and Tiffany calling those two French factories. And of course, only one of those is French, and that's Galley. Tiffany, of course, is from New York in America. So that's that cleared up. I'll try not to make any more errors. But if I do, please do shout out. I think it's great that this communi community can do that. And we can all sort of look out and, and make sure that um, we're all learning together and learning the right sort of stuff. Uh, I also asked what you thought of that format. Last week, we just looked at one object. We talked all about the White Fries Factory, all about Jeffrey Baxter and uh, we got to look at that TV vase and what it made at auction. So I wanted to know what you thought about the video format and there's quite a few comments so thanks for those but the general consensus was that out there you're really enjoying a few items per video with less information just a few snapshots on each object. So that's duly noted and I'll probably try and get back to that format soon but just at the moment looking at one object per video really does work for me and the amount of time I've got available with um, with the new arrival at uh, home, of course. So yeah, last week we looked at a factory and this week we're looking at one man. We're looking at a designer and that's Keith Murray because in the sale we had this wonderful Art Deco silver plated cocktail shaker by Mapping and Web designed by Keith Murray. I've known about Keith Murray for quite a long time. I remember in the very early days of uh, my career first selling an Art Deco vase by the Wedgwood factory designed by Keith Murray and I thought how minimalist it was. I did quite like it, but I thought it's very minimalist. I um, can't see that making a lot, but it, it did. It sold for quite uh, quite a few pounds, maybe made about a hundred pounds. But a lot of people know those Art Deco designs made at Wedgwood by Keith Murray, those step designs and glazed in those really striking glazes, really fantastic things and so Art Deco, so, uh, so striking in design. But I only ever knew him for Wedgwood, so when a customer came into the sale room with an iPad, as they often do, showing items that they've inherited or if they're going through um, dealing with a bereaved estate, they bring a whole bunch of pictures so we can look at them together. Um, that's the wonder of technology these days. It's not just improved bidding, it's also improved valuation. No longer do we have to go to several house calls. People actually bring us things in on tablets or they send emails in and we can look at pictures that way. But I saw the cocktail shaker among some other ordinary silver plate and thought, you know, that's that's a fun thing. People seem to be in, into cocktails a lot more these days. Uh, so it's something that's it's it's beautiful, but it's also functional, which is great. So I thought, yeah, maybe 30 or 50 pounds. They then brought the cocktail shaker in and when I actually saw it, I saw it was a little bit more interesting than your average cocktail uh, shaker. It's got all these cocktail recipes uh, engraved along the outside. So I did a little bit of research and I found a few others and found that they were actually designed by Keith Murray. I was quite surprised because I just took for granted that I thought he was just a designer in the world of ceramics, but no, he also designed this cocktail shaker. Now Keith Murray was actually New Zealand born and his story doesn't start at the Wedgwood factory of course. And Keith Murray's family emigrated from New Zealand to Britain when he was 14 years old. And during World War I, Keith Murray served on the Royal Flying Corps and was actually awarded the Military Cross. After the war, Murray graduated from the Architectural Association School of Architecture in London. However, lack of work and the Great Depression in the 1920s meant that Murray really didn't get any work in his chosen field of architecture, so sadly he had to choose a different career path. So Murray decided to become a full-time designer. And what's really strange to me is Last week we dealt all about the White Fries Factory. This week it's the Mapping and Web Cocktail Shaker. Two objects that I picked out. I did all the filming of the actual objects on the viewing over two weeks ago now. Just picked these two bits because I quite like them. But it actually turns out these two stories are intertwined. Keith Murray actually went to the Powell family to see about if he could get work working for the White Fries Factory and designing glass. Um, but it turns out that they didn't really think that Keith's designs were in keeping with uh, the way that White Fries designed and made glass and alas he didn't get a job there. He did manage however to secure a position at Stevens and Williams and he designed a whole range of them, thousands of shapes of vases for Stevens and Williams. Some of them making sort of low to mid hundreds, some of them in fact even up as high as a thousand pounds. But in the 1930s, Josiah Wedgwood 
invited Keith Murray to go there and visit the factory. And at this time, Keith Murray started to design dinner and tablewares for the Wedgwood factory. And this is where those iconic rib designs start to appear. And in 1934, the Royal Silversmiths of Macken and Webb approached Keith Murray to ask him if he could design them a range of bowls and vases in silver and silver plate much in the same design as he had done for Wedgwood. So it's obviously from this period of Keith Murray's life that our lot, our Mackin and Webb silver plated cocktail shaker in the Art Deco design designed by Keith Murray comes into existence. Now last Christmas I bought a cocktail shaker. Um, it's, I think it's in some kind of pressed steel. It's really thin. It's quite low quality, it's quite poor. So when I got this one in my hands, I'm really disappointed that I'd gone and bought a brand new one and wish I'd have held out to buy a good quality um, vintage one. This one was made in the 30s. It's got a real premium feel. It's real thick metal and then good silver plating. Uh, as I've said already, it's engraved with uh, a number of cocktail recipes. So you can just read the outside of the canister to make up a uh, cocktail. It's also engraved with this trailing band around the outside of these revelers really having a good time in a, a good cocktail party. It really just screams of the jazz age. I went online and I found a few price examples. Some of them are just, just plain with, without the recipes and some have the recipes but not the figures around the top and some have both. Um, prices, you know, from the low 200s as we can see up to up to four and five hundred pounds and this example at Andrew Hartley's this was sold in 2013 actually comes with a set of six uh, glasses there the cocktail glasses that one made 560 so with all this in mind I opted for a one to two hundred pound catalog estimate so let's see how we did at the auction I'm sure it's going to be a tense battle cue the dramatic music let's get ready for this Hot 602 is the Mappin and Webb Art Deco silver plated cocktail shaker designed by Keith Murray Internet bids fire straight in at £320, 340 let's see, any advance? No action on the day then, everything's online, pre-sale, in and out at £320. So, in the end a very boring auction to watch, but at £320, way above that top estimate, a good price. And uh, when we look at the range of prices out there, a good healthy price for the cocktail shaker, so very happy with that, and somebody's got themselves uh, a great little item. I also discovered that um, Keith Murray's uh, dream of being an architect didn't really fizzle out because in 1936 the Wedgwood factory actually commissioned him to build their brand new factory. And after World War II, Keith Murray then went into architecture full time. So it just goes to show whatever your plans you have for your life or whatever dreams you've got, they might not unfold exactly the way you think they're going to. The universe has a strange way of just playing things out in a in a different way to what you might expect. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. I'm sorry it's only been one object. Uh, I'm gonna stick to this format for the foreseeable uh, and we'll see see what happens with, uh, with time and my schedule. I'll try and get back to the old format at some point. Once in a while I'll try and uh, inject a few more items but um, we'll see how we go. This next sale, which is on the 6th of May, um, the Antiques Road Trip are actually coming. So if you're viewing this video nice and early, Perhaps you'll come along on Monday and get yourselves on telly. Uh, anyway, have, uh, have a good weekend. I'll see you in seven days for another video. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like if you've enjoyed the video. We'll see you then.